PR Network will prepare you on every level to share your knowledge, expand your brand, and take your business to the next level. At CTR, we nurture your vision and make it a radio reality. Contact Cameron Steele at 425-221-3646 or Cameron at ctrnetwork.com and put your dream into motion today. The Heart-Led Living Intuition Academy with Sue DeMay is a unique unschooling experience designed to unwind, clear, and align your intuitive channel. And the doors are open for you now. Experience unwavering faith and deep trust in your intuition as you strengthen your connection to source, allowing you to walk through every moment with more peace, confidence, clarity, and certainty. Experience this deep personal transformation with Sue's guidance, including the option to share what you learn as a certified intuitive coach. This is your time to unwind and reprogram your mind, to rebuild your foundation and realign with your intuitive heart. Enrollment is now open. Apply today at heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Again, that's heartledliving.com forward slash intuition academy. Did you know that you can rate our shows on iTunes? Yep, you can share your thoughts about the topics, the hosts, and the special guests. You can also leave a suggestion. Then, when you're done, rate the show. The hosts love your feedback, and others appreciate it. So next time you download a show, take a second to leave your thoughts and rate it. Inspiration, brave action, and heartwarming journeys. This is what the Louise H. Reed Show brings you. Now, here's your host, Louise H. Reed. Hello, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining once again this wonderful Tuesday. I'm your host, Louise H. Reed, with listeners in over 145 countries and millions of iTunes downloads and ongoing podcasts, I'm the fortunate host here every Tuesday at this time to look into the lives of everyday people doing extraordinary things. People who take brave, bold action in pursuit of their dreams and goals and are here to share their journey and learnings to help you do the same in yours. Before we start, I'd like to thank you for joining me each and every week and for providing me the opportunity to share and grow with you. There is nothing more valuable than time, so I'm honored you're sharing yours with me. Now, let's get to today's guest. But before we hear from her, let me share a little bit of information about her. Mirjana Krasanovic is an inspirational mountain climber from Sweden. She shows that the sky is the limit with her blog, Mirjana's Adventures. She also advocates for human rights and gender equality, and when she was 10 years old, she became blind. While she is blind, she does not see any obstacles in her life. If you watched the Swedish version of the Oscars, you would have seen her on the red carpet and on stage, where she shared a powerful and inspirational speech. Now she works as a career advisor, an actress, a producer, is one of the script writers for the movie, Look Through My Eyes, and I'm wondering what else, because that's a long list of accomplishments for the young age that she is. I'm so thrilled and honored to welcome Virginia to the show. Hello. Hello, hello. I truly have been looking forward to this interview since you reached out to me, Virginia. I think it was late in 2018. And so again, I, I thank you for, first of all, reaching out and second of all, for having such courage to be, um, to be sharing your story. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And wow, that introduction introduction was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes hard to hear those things about yourself, isn't it? Like, oh, is one. <laughs> yeah, because I even thought that too as I'm reading. Career advisor, actress, producer, scriptwriter. <laughs> um, and, how, and how old are you, Majana? Just so the, the listeners know. I'm 25 years old, but I'm soon 26. So... But, but yeah, 25. I'm a multitasking person. <laughs> 25. Those are a lot of things to have accomplished for a 25-year-old. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, where do we even start? 
Why don't you start by telling us what you want when you were a child, when you were young Mirjana, even though you are still young, younger Mirjana, what yeah. did you want to be? What did you want to be when you grew up? And then let's start to explore what happened next. Mm -hmm. So when I was a child, my first, first dream was to become an uh, astronaut. But I realized that I couldn't be that. So then I decided to be an actress because I love movies and, you know, I love to work with filming creative work, you know. But when I became blind when I was 10 years old, I fell down in a depression and I met a, a career advisor who told yep. me like, come down to earth, like you can be an actress or movie maker because you're blind. Mm -hmm. And well, it took me a lot of years to come over, you know, the voices in the head who told me like, you can't because I was bullied in school and I had a lot of doubts in life. So yeah, but yeah, now well, I've, I live in my life, you know, because I have overcome all my uh, doubts about myself and, you know. So uh, I, I just so appreciate your honesty and openness because, you know, let's be, let, let's be really honest here and say that individuals who are able-bodied and who don't have any sort of apparent disabilities that might be holding them back in something as significant as, as, as vision, we all still have self-doubt. We all still have other things, other people that are holding us down and we don't all overcome them. And so I'd love to learn a little bit more about who did you have in your life or what kind of, what kind of, um, I want to explore the little spirit that you must have inside you to say, no, I'm not going to listen to that. Mm -hmm. So talk to us, you know, when you were told that career advisor is telling you that, talk to us a little bit about what was going through your mind and how you decided to get to that point where you, where you thought, I'm going to discard that comment. I'm not going to listen to that voice. I'm going to choose something other. Mm. So to make a long story short, like from the first beginning, beginning, of course, I became very sad because, you know, we talk about dream, about the future, like, and when somebody has told you all your life, you can't, you're worthless, you're nothing. And then when a other person tell you like, you can't, uh, again, then a lot of thoughts crossed my mind, but I thought like, then it's enough. I know I can do it and I want to try, you know, and it was actually my dance teacher who was the first human being who believed in me and who told me like, with your attitude, you can climb mountains and something in his words inspired me. So I started to climb real mountains and <laughs> during those adventures trips, I think I found my strength to try and go out of my comfort zone. And yeah, it, it was not easy. You know, you take one step forward and you slide back two steps, you know, and you take one step forward and slide back again. So it's, it's hard to say like it was the turning point, right? Uh, but it was the first turning point, you know. I think you really raised an amazing <laughs> point. I, I got goosebumps when you, when you mentioned your dance teacher. And so a shout out, what's your dance teacher's name? Brandon Smith. So <laughs> shout out to him, big shout out to him. Yeah. With your attitude, you can climb mountains. Seriously, what a beautiful thing to have said to such a, a young person who's so impressionable, right? We're so impressionable when we're young. Um, I want to hear more about this mountain climbing. So let me, <laughs> how do that, how do you do that? How do I do? So, okay, so, so actually logistics, you know, the, I'm sure there's someone listening who thinks this woman is, is like this, a bright spark and superstar, but actually wondering how does a blind person, once they've overcome the, the inner demons, because I think that's the hardest part, um, which you did, how do you climb a mountain? 
Well, I borrow someone's eyes. So I have a guide with me. So I hold someone's hand or arm or we have a rope between us. And then they tell me like, oh, step up or down or if it's a rock or if they tell me where I should put my hand and feet, you know, which angle it is, you know. So basically- You make it sound so I, easy. <laughs> you make it sound like we just <laughs> walked down the street. It's not easy, but you know, <laughs> it's basically that. But um, how I do, you know, I have like a stick or a cane, so I keep my balance because when yeah. you are blind, it's sometimes very hard with the balance, you know? So, um, wow. but how I do, like, I, I follow their uh, body language and then also I, I try to just take it slow because you right. go slowly when you go uphill and you hiking. Uh, so it's all, all about to be safe. So, yeah. I think there's so, there's so much, awesomeness in that in that story that you even shared and the first thing I that really struck with struck me um which I take away is to anyone regardless of the struggles that we're experiencing in life is trust yeah I mean, you must you must have had a tremendous amount of trust and faith in yourself and then trust in the person who is guiding you and I think that's a really special a really special connection and bond and I and I think that for anyone to get anywhere in their life where they've not yet been. They need to find a guide and they need to trust that guide. And I think sometimes we are afraid to trust because we don't know like, how will it be if I trust this person? You know, yeah. like you can follow some advice, but you never know how will it end, you know? Yeah. And I think that's, if I give you a story, like I remember I was on a, uh, class uh, physical uh, education do you say that yep. and we were at a swimming pool and I was supposed to jump from a uh, trampoline and believe it or not but even when you're blind you can be afraid of heights and I'm very afraid of heights and <laughs> you know and my teachers told me like just let it go just jump just do it and I did I was afraid because I think it's maybe more scary to jump out because you don't know how high it is you know yeah but something in his words uh forced me to climb up to the highest trampoline and just threw me out you know so um yeah so i think that's what we are afraid of because we don't know like if i take this path in life how shall shall it be you know I, it is a, those are beautiful examples of exactly that and having to have the faith and trust and belief in yourself and those who are with you to take the steps, even though you don't know how it's going to work out, because that's really where the magic happens, isn't it? Yeah. And it, I, I, if you would ask like the 10 years old Mirjana, like uh, how your life going to be 15 years later, I should not believe you because you know, I was very afraid of talking in front of people uh, yeah. when I was a child. And if you should tell me like, oh, you're going to talk in front of like 1 million people. I don't know how many people listen now. Like, oh my yeah. God, I got to <laughs> freak it out or something. <laughs> you know, I remember what every time I should uh, supposed to have a uh, presentation in school I cried and that was the most terrifying thing I could do you know talking in front of a lot of people and you know uh, and when you go through bullying they said yeah. I, uh, it, it it's it makes you very uh, unsure about how should I do right or if I do that what would people think about you is this right or this is wrong, you know, so. Uh, and so who were the people in your life at that time that were those, a safe place to land where you'd go and they would help to build you back up and say, you know, give you the hug and the kiss and sort of say, keep going. Who are those people in your life? There is a lot of people, uh, of course, my family, but also I had some couple of friends who really, you know, console me when I was depressed and 
it, it sounds very easy and cheesy, but it, it, it's never over. Like you, you mm-hmm. it's just in your head. Like if I, when I was there and in the hospital, I could decide to just lay there and, you know, just cry every day and just like give up. Um, I also had like um, thoughts about there's no meaning in life anymore. Right. I don't want to live anymore. And, you know, it, maybe it sounds like a c- cliche, but but you have a choice. Like I decided to show people like I can and I don't want to be a victim because people uh, treat treat me like a victim because I yeah. was blind. I was like, I'm so much more than my blindness. Beyond my blindness, I'm a human as you, you know. And I had so many dreams and I felt like now or never, like we have just one life. Does it make sense? Absolutely makes sense. I mean, I'm completely humbled by all of what you're saying and by all of your accomplishments. Um, I, I, I don't mean to keep sort of harping on your age, but I think it's a significant piece here because it shows the drive that you have considering um, the challenges that other people would imagine that blindness would give someone. And you've just smashed through those. How many people in their life can say that, they, you know, that they're a mountain climber? <laughs> or were an actress or producer, a scriptwriter, never mind when they were the age that you, that you are. So there's so, much, there's so much inspiration to be gleaned from your story, but it's not the story so much, it's your spirit. It's your spirit and your mindset. And I love the, um, I love the simplicity with which you speak, that you really boil it down to some really simple concepts that I think are so relatable, right? You've talked about it being a choice. And I think that that's so relatable to anyone in their life, what, whatever stage or age that they're at, you can choose today that this is my only life and I'm going to rock it. Yeah, <laughs> I, chose I, that, I chose that at 40 years old. And um, you chose that much younger. There'll be others who may be listening who might be 65 and it, it's, never too, it's never too late to make that choice. It's never too early and it's never too late to make that choice. Yeah. I also love something else that you said um, when you were talking about climbing the mountain, you talked about taking it slow. And it's also, I found that really relatable to everyone regardless of where they're at. We often want to, whatever the mountain is in our mind or that we've got the goal that we've set, we want to get there now and fast. Yeah, exactly. We, we want some fast result. It's the same in the gym, you know, people think like, oh, if I do like <laughs> 10 push-ups, I can, I don't know, but it's not about that. It, it takes time. It takes time That's and uh, uh, patience, very much patience. <laughs> and patience and, isn't an easy thing. Well, I guess uh, there's therefore the same patience is a virtue, right? That's an expression. Yeah. Um, and so love, again, I just, that's the, such simple concepts, which are so powerful and such amazing takeaways that I think that you share. I wanted to jump into the movie, if, if, if we may. Um, and the reason I want to jump into that now is because you've already shared a couple of things um, in this interview about, you know, being in the hospital and then making a choice, the bullying, um, the dancing and your dance teacher. So is this story based on your life? Because I saw that in the, in, the, in the trailer. Yeah, the trailer is amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, so it's, a, it's kind of based on a real story because uh, the character Molly, is, she becomes blind over one night, uh, but she doesn't want to see her blindness as an obstacle. So she signs up for a dance competition. But I have never took part in a, in a dance competition, unfortunately, not yet. But not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but I'm going to be in the World Championship of Performing Arts so soon. Uh, yep. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's true, though. Uh, but um, the story is about Molly. She's struggling with self-doubt. And yeah, but I wrote the script with a friend of mine. So it's based on not just my story. I think everybody have a story, a dark side, maybe we all have bad days. And this story is about 
how you get there from the bottom to the top, you know. Now I'm talking in metaphors, but I hope people understand what I mean. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I think that, again, so, it speaks to how relatable everything yeah. that you do. And I think that's a real gift that you have uh, in terms of being able to share your story in a way that is inspiring. You don't sound like it and you don't sound like a victim. So in terms of no, one, I, I don't find myself feeling sorry for you. I find myself completely inspired by you. And I think that's a gift in the way that you share that. And it's also a gift in how you make the things that, um, that you ch were challenging, that were challenging for you. You make it relatable that it's no different than anyone else. And I think yeah. you do such a service to yourself in sharing that, and you're doing such a service to uh, those with disabilities in, in the way that you, that you convey your experience. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big, having, you know, my, my, my corporate life, which I, I'm not too involved in corporate anymore, uh, I, I led a few diversity and inclusion um, teams uh, and projects and plans, et cetera. And so, I have a huge passion for creating greater equity in our workplaces. So, and just in our lives. And so that, that's, so your story touched me in a slightly different way as well, because I've got that as part of my, part of yeah. my own background and, and it's part of my soul really. So. But yeah. And, and I think it's more touching because, you know, when I saw the trailer, I cried because I, oh, wow, this is, kind of my story but you know molly the character she's a part of me which i was when i was very depressed yeah and to go back to that was very difficult actually and yeah. uh the other character tim who helped her he's like a version of every people it every single people who helped mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. so, Every single person who helped me is put into this character who believe in someone. It means very much to someone if you are very depressed and someone always tell you, you can do it, you know? So, yeah, so what, what, um, what advice would you give to someone who is having a day full, a day full or, you know, a, a time period full of self-doubt? What would well, you... Uh, I know it's a, it's kind of a big one answer, but I should say, like, it's your life. Don't let anyone tell what you can do or not can do, you know. And also, if you feel you need support, like, take support from other people. You Sometimes we need help from other people. Yeah. And I also think it's important to think about why do I want to do this? Why is this important to me? Why do I want to reach this dream? And not just like thinking about a dream like a distant goal, but also to live your dream here and now. I know it sounds very easy, but it's you who create your own future, you know? So I think when I'm thinking about like, how when I did it then I thought like how shall I do this not can I because if I think about how I got more possibilities and options in my head like you yeah know. it's open then it's it's yeah, more open and you because if you think can I do this it's a yes or no yeah. and of course we all have those voices who say no but we have to really focus on the optimistic uh, thoughts. Like, l let me give you an example. Like, okay. if I say to you, uh, don't think about yellow. Don't think about yellow. <laughs> I say, no, don't think about yellow. You're thinking about yellow. Think but about I, if yellow. I say to you, uh, think about green. Think about how beautiful green is and what you can paint with green and the green eyes, the green fruits, the forest is green, flowers. It's so beautiful to think about green. You forgot about that yellow color, right? Yep. You see so, only what you focus on. You see yeah, only what you exactly. So I think if you just focus on what you want and what it means to you, it 
gives you energy. I, I, that's my thought though. I mean, it gives you spark because I wanted to start to dance and nobody believed that I could do it because I'm blind, you know? And when I said like, I know I can do it and I let me just try it. And no dance teacher believed in me. And then I, I met this uh, Brandon Smith who believed in me and he, he said, you know what? I have no idea how to help you, but let's try it, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> that was very funny. We tried like the moonwalks and yeah. So, so, how, so, how did he, huh? so, how, so how did he help you? How did well, he do it? He did it by, well, we tried to figure it out because it was no clear answer from the first yeah. beginning, but he tests like uh, different methods uh, all yeah. from like touching, you know, showing me yeah. by touching me and shape my body. And then sometimes he, he described it with words, you know, oh, you should move your body like a snake or something. Okay. Because, because I was not blind since birth, I could, you know, use metaphors. You know? Right. So what a creative, what, what, what courage and creativity. I, it's all about I, communication. <laughs> It is, isn't it? It really is. And talk yeah. about you having that, that desire and drive and energy to make, to make something happen. Um, yeah. Absolutely, you said it as well. And just to, to share your words, live your dream here and now. Um, and, I, and I do, and you know, my, my own coach uh, reminds me or asks me, what's the next best step? Because yeah. when you just focus on the next best step, as long as you're clear on sort of where it is you're trying to go and, and why, it's like, okay, I can figure out the next best step. I can figure that out. And before you know it, you're climbing a mountain, right? <laughs> because all you did was focus on the next best step to get that. Yeah, step by step. Step by step. Again, so cliche, but it really... Oh my gosh, I, I'm a cliche uh, in myself. So. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I joke often that by the time I'm 80 years old, should I have the good fortune of living that old, I'll be speaking in quotes and cliches. That's, <laughs> that, will be, that will be me. Yeah. Um, so tell us that who, who inspires you? Where do you get your inspiration from? You know what? I have no one person because I admire people from different kind of reasons, you know. So some people in, near me, like my friends, my family, but I also, insp I'm inspired by people who never gives up, you know, and people who just dare to go out of their comfort zone and who break norms who don't care about what other things, you know, they just go for it. And that makes me so like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of fears and breaking out of norms, um, and you alluded to it a few minutes ago that you had a fear of public speaking. Why was this a fear that you wanted to overcome? Why was this one important for you? Good question. Like, I, I think it... It was never about like, oh, from, from now and forward, how do you say that? From this moment on, I will yeah. never, ever be afraid. It was not like that. It was more about like, I wanted to share my story. And I felt like when I saw other people talking, I was so inspired, like, wow, I want to be there. But oh, I have to stand on a stage. How can I do this? So... <laughs> So I think it was a baby steps from the first beginning. And um, yeah, I, I think it was just about to, to think about what I want to do. And then to come to there, I need to go over these obstacles, you know. Yeah, then it was just similar to what you were saying about the dancing, I suppose, right? You decided that's what, that's what I'm going to do. And then, and then you figured out the how. You made the decision, you made the choice. And then how was like, well, I guess I have to figure that out. And so um, you did that with public speaking too. So kudos to you. Yeah. I'm so thankful yeah. that you asked her. Yeah. And, but actually, I, I love to stand on stage because when I was nine years old, I um, was in a theater in school. And that was so fun. And I felt like, wow, this is so amazing. And then 
you know, I fell down in a depression and I was bullied in school. Then I didn't have the motivation, but I should never ever be able to stand where I am today if I have not this people, you know, who help yeah. me, support me. And yeah, so this summer I'm going to be like, <laughs> it's amazing to say this, but I, I'm going to be in the world championship or performing arts in LA. So that, that's like, oh my God, you know, from to be that little girl who n never ever could open her mouth in front of people like, and to be there in LA, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> It is incredible. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to you. Tell us more about about that. Tell us more about this event that you that you'll be at. Well, it's a world championship, uh, as I said, and it's like different categories. So there is singing, uh, there is acting, dancing. Uh, I I'm gonna be there uh, as an actor. So yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Almost yeah. like a trailer, but in acting, not dancing. Not this time. <laughs> not this time. That's what I want to see you there dancing next time. I, um, I, I think I know that your story is going to serve to inspire and motivate others to take action in their own lives. And I'm challenging listeners just to figure out what that next, to take it slow, to trust yourself, and to figure out what the next best step is. Um, I also saw that you were in, featured in um, Runner's World. So you're a runner as well. Yeah, I love to run. Love to run. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so tell us how long have you been running for and tell us, you know, how running is part of your life and what that does for you. Yeah, so remember I told you this story about the swimming pool when I jumped from a trampoline, you know? Yeah. And after that jump, uh, we were supposed to swim very fast and uh, my teacher took time, you know, how uh, long time it takes for you to go from there to there. And I was so bad condition, you know, I, I, I couldn't breathe, you know. So I decided then like, okay, I, I need a change. So I buy a card on a gym. So I started yeah. to on a gym. But, you know, because I'm blind, I can't, you know, orientate myself navigate uh, in the gym so i thought well i can stand on a what is called that track you run on yeah um, running track yeah, yeah. Or treadmill? So treadmill? i i uh, stood there and i start this machine but <laughs> it's a touching screen so i couldn't slow it down you know the um, the speed uh, the speed so <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah i that's how it began and that's how it began. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and so what's, what's next for you? What's, what's your next sort of dream or goal that you're aspiring to? Well, I am that kind of person who have 1 million ideas of what I, what I want to do. But I feel like right now, the main thing I'm focused on is like this uh, movie, Look Through My Eyes, the movie. Yep. And also this uh, world championship of performing arts. I feel like I don't need to do this one million things to prove myself. I just do what I love to do because I love it and because it's fun. And also because I want to inspire people. Like I don't need to prove myself, uh, you know, as it started. Imagine what the world would be like if everyone <laughs> made choices from that point of view. I think we'd have a lot of, I believe, we'd have a lot less um, illness and depression yeah, in the world. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and I and think so, everybody can do it. I mean, I was on the bottom. I didn't want to live anymore when I became blind, but I know what it takes to overcome those uh, diamonds in the, in, in the head. And yes. I know it's hard but it's not impossible you know if, if you believe that you can do it if you really believe in yourself there is there are possibilities but if you don't believe it there is on, there are only excuses yeah absolutely I again 
I know, but I love it. You're talking to someone who loves them as well, so we're all good. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've said to my, my, my boys many times, if you say you can, you're right. If you say you can't, you're right. And, and, it, and that sounds so simple, but it's, it really, it really it is. It is, it is. That, right? um, so tell us a little bit more about where you're at with the movie. So I know the trailer is done. Um, and so where are you at in terms of full production and that kind of thing? Yeah, so the script is uh, finished. We have a cast, we got the trailer. And now we raise money for this production and we are in a pre-production now. So we, we planning all the future movie, you know, and yes. um, there is a lot of things. It's to make a puzzle, you know, every single detail need to fit, you know, so it's a lot of work. Um, and we also uh, by social media try to, start a conversation about, you know, motivation and also um, what it, what's like to be blind, you know, mm -hmm. because I think there is people who, who never ever have thought about what it is to be blind yeah. and what it's like. And therefore I need to blog about this on social media. So at LTME, the movie, on Instagram and on Facebook, it's a look through my eyes, the movie. So we there talk about like, um, yeah, what is a daily life as a, as a blind person? Like what, what it looks, you know, how do I do my breakfast? How do I find my clothes? How do I find my way to the train station? Uh, I have my tricks, you know, I count steps. I, feeling my way, you know, and I have specific places where I put my stuff, you know, I have my methods, how to make it. And, you know, I also talk about how you overcome all these doubts we talked about before, you know. Um, yeah, and I think that's so important to make it once again relatable. And that's one of your, I mentioned that already, I think that's really a gift of yours is, the way that you are able to reach out to others and create a connection to make it to make it more understood. Because I do believe that when more can understand and relate to the situations that others are experiencing, whether regardless of what the disability is, it allows us to then make changes in how we design our buildings, our communities, um, and just our, and, and our world, which will be more accessible to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I wanted to make this movie be, uh, just about that, you know, like it could be you, you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter if this character is blind or not, or if there is something else who is the obstacle, but it's just have, have to be about overcome that and see it as a strength, not a weaknesses, you know? Oh, yeah. we all, I think we all have something, you know, not like a weakness, but something we can work on, you know, to be uh, better. Of course we do. Absolutely. And oftentimes those are much, much more hidden. Um, and so when the obstacle is much more out there, um, obviously that's more obvious and maybe more challenging in certain ways to sort of overcome. It's interesting you were saying, you know, about the conversation that you're, that you're wanting to, to start. And I encourage listeners to, to, to join in on the conversation. I'll include your social media uh, handles in the show notes. So I want to make sure I have all of those, Marjana, before, um, before the, day, the day is over so we can get those in the show notes. Uh, I just think that's it's, it's paramount. I, I, I took a course once. Um, Ontario has, in recent years, has has legislated something called the uh, Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. And um, I think that's part of the answer is legislating certain things, but part of the answer is also really from the grassroots, is connecting with people on a really human level to understand the experience and to put themselves in, um, in other people's shoes to have some empathy. And through this training, there were a few things I just wanted to mention. One of them was, and I can't remember the stats, but that a lot of disabilities are, are acquired disabilities. And like, like, like you, you were not born with that. And so we think that just because we are able bodies and we 
have sight and we have hearing right now, well, maybe we would put one of those statistics where that changes in our life, right? Yeah, you never know. It can be like, you know. Absolutely. Tomorrow, you, you never Absolutely. know. So. so that was sort of, you know, that was a bit of an eye opener for me. Um, and then one of the exercises that we had in the training, which I thought was really neat, was there were several different stations and each of the stations represented a disability that um, members of our community experience. And it was a simulation in an attempt to put yourself in the situation that um, someone who was hard of hearing, someone who was, um, this, this particular station wasn't blind. It was one where we had glasses on and uh, there was nail polish had been put all over the, the lenses and then just, just some scratches um, through it. So there was some sight, but then you had to read a passage. And I realize that we're talking about really, really small situations to try and give some insight, but it alone was quite, quite, an, quite an experience to go through that because even in those moments, even though I knew it was a simulation, I was feeling insecure, mm. even though it was a simulation. And so it made me really consider, you know, for a moment, what mm. it may be like for others who are trying to navigate this world that is created for able-bodied, sighted, mm. hearing people, right? Hearing people, exactly. Like, yeah. to, if I should explain it, like people think because I'm blind, I have some superpower, you know, I can hear better. I can, I don't know, read minds. I don't know. But <laughs> it's all about like using your sense, like be, uh, put attention to your senses. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like it can be a gift, but it can also be very distracting, you know, when you are in a environment who is very noisy and you hear every single sound very good, you know, right. You can't filter it out and it took me a long time to you know learn how to handle that right. so when I became blind from the first beginning I didn't know how to handle it and I was as you said like I was so in, in, insecure and I didn't dare to like go out from my house you know so yeah, yeah it's scary but if, if somebody just show you how you can do it and you find your own tricks, I think it's possible. And, and so what, what did, how did you start, what were those small steps that you took from when you got home? What were those first few steps that led you towards being courageous? Because you were courageous right out of the gate. You first made a choice, which kudos to you, because that's massive. What were those little steps that you took? You mean from the first beginning when I became blind or? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, from the first beginning, it was, fr first beginning, it was more like, okay, uh, how shall I find my clothes? How yeah. shall I find my way to the school? And how can I write on my computer, like with this voice over, you know? I, it was basically those things which you take for granted, mm -hmm. like how, how can I, uh, if it's snowy outside, how can I find my way then? And you count steps and to um, know what is the difference between this milk and this yogurt, you right. something, you know, like a tape or what do you call yeah. that? In English, just to touch it and you feel, okay, this is with a tape one, then I know it's the milk. Uh-huh, this is the yogurt or, I need to smell it, you know, and you, you start to listen more to the echo, you put more attention. So I, to make a long answer short, I think the first step was to be more, um, um, how do you say that? Give more attention to your uh, surroundings. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I thank you for sharing that because I think um, it's another example. I mean, you've given quite a few that it's not how, if you will figure it out. You've already made the decision that you will. And it's just a matter of how. And mm -hmm. so I'd like to challenge listeners right now with something that they may be struggling with making a decision on. Make that decision. and. 
and just start and start working towards the how. You know, little steps by little steps. I mean, if you can overcome what you have and now climb, you know, do you still climb mountains? Yeah. <laughs> so when, how do you find the time for all of this? <laughs> well, I have no uh, free time at all. <laughs> That's my daily <laughs> life. Yeah. Well, it's um, great. What a life. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm working as a career advisor, then yeah. five o'clock, I change clothes, then I'm a producer and an actress, and then I'm also working as a volunteer, you know, to help other people. And so I have no, but I do what I love, so I don't feel I'm working all the day, you know. Yeah. So you are a real um, life wonder. You are a real life wonder woman. Yeah. You really. But you to really be honest, my my to answer the question, like the mountain climbing, I don't do that every day. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just do that when I'm on holiday or you know when I'm trying to give a give give myself a holiday. But I try to combine, you know, business uh, work with the uh, mountain climbing. So, yeah. I was like at Kilimanjaro and uh, I was in New Zealand. But when I, when I was in Nepal, I was also a volunteer there. So I tried to combine, you know. Okay. So how I find time, that's a very good question. I answer myself that every day. Yeah, and I think it's just prioritizing, isn't it, really? The things that are important to you, the things that light you up. And I think it's, and you nailed it by saying it's not work. You choose things that, that fulfill you and give back, right? Give back to others, which also can give to you. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, mean, like, I just like plan, like, okay, now I know my schedule and I, you know, I'm trying to plan what, what I shall do. And then it's not stressful because I know, okay, I need breaks. I need to find energy because it's very fun to work with all these things, but it also, it's important to plan how to find energy. You know, if you need to medication, how do you say that? Me meditation? Meditation, yeah, meditation, yeah. Yeah, and if you need to, I don't know, if you need to just find a, a moment for yourself and just listen yeah. to music or, just a power nap, you know, if you want, want to do that, it's, it's very important to know uh, what gives you energy and you are the only one who knows, you know. I talk a lot about self-care and, and so I appreciate you bringing that up too as a part of what it is that you do in your life because you do have a full busy life. And I, so I really appreciate that you're bringing that, that element of self-care in and listening to yourself and nurturing yourself so you can continue to do all of these things that, that, um, that you do. Um, you know, through all of what you've accomplished so far in your life, what, what's the accomplishment that you're most proud of? Wow, that's a hard question. Um, difficult to answer, but I would say... <laughs> I don't know if I'm proud of jumping from the bunny jump, but um, I'm proud of like, to be honest, I'm proud of that I went and finished my education at university, actually, yeah. Um, yeah. because that was no option when I was a child because I come from a no academic background family. Okay. And, you know, I had so many dreams and I realized that if I need to, you know, reach these dreams, I need to go through university. But yeah, um, yeah I, I think that's the most thing I'm proud of. And believe me, that takes a lot of not just energy, but also motivation and discipline. Do you say that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, you know, for me as blind, it takes longer time. So more patient there. <laughs> so, so I think that's the most thing. But of course, I'm proud of everything, but in different levels, you know. Yeah. And, I, 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 and I'm seeing just a lot of uh, character traits that I feel um, that persist through all of these things that you've accomplished, right? So it's the belief, the trust, the courage, um, and the knowing that you'll figure out the how. So it almost doesn't matter which one that you're talking about because it's taken that, those ingredients 
Yeah, those ingredients. And that's what, uh, again, it's just, you've got this like spark that's just so, that so attracted me to you. Um, something that popped into my mind, because we are getting closer to the top of the hour, not quite, but close. I know that you are raising money for your movie. Is that right? Yeah. So how would someone find out, how could someone find out more about the movie and then what you need from a financial perspective? Should there be someone who is interested in wanting to support you in that endeavor? Yeah. So there is a, a way if you want to contact us and if you want to donate, you can go on Facebook or Instagram. So on okay. Instagram, it's at LTME, the movie. And on Facebook, it is look through my eyes, the movie. And there you can write to us and uh, we're going to answer how you can do it. You know, you can do it by PayPal or whatever, you know, it's depending on where in the world you are. But yeah, you can contact us and we can explain more there. Uh, Mirror's Adventures is also an obstacle. Uh, option if you want so yeah, yeah it's not an obstacle not an obstacle, no it's an obstacle. Ob sorry <laughs> sorry <No ob> <laughs> option, we have, i mean <laughs> we have been talking a lot about obstacles today so i'm not surprised that that came up um i i i definitely encourage people to check it out i did when i was doing my advertising for the show majana you may have seen that i did include um a youtube link so people could actually see a little bit more about you when I post the um, follow-up to this and post and, and on social media, when I post the, uh, the replay or the, the podcast link, I'd love to include the link as well to um, how people can support you financially. Right? Check so, out the trailer. It's amazing. Very beautiful. And I hope I can inspire people. So it was extremely, it was extremely touching. I have to say so well done. So well done. Um, and I'm thoroughly impressed and fully plan on supporting you and your fundraising efforts as well. So I'll be doing that. I'll be in touch with you after the show about that. Um, so if you think about your life now, you know, how would you, how do you define success? What are you, what are you, what does a successful life look like for you? For me, to me, honestly, success is not about what you accomplish. It's more about what you make other people do. Does it make sense? Yeah, tell me a little bit more what you mean. I mean more like if I can make people uh, go for it and, you know, charity up and if I can help them to reach their dreams, that succeeds yeah. for me. Yeah. I don't care about to... You know, I have done my, you know, list of crazy things, you know, <laughs> and for me, it's more about to be happy. That's the most important for me. And if you wake up on Monday and you feel like, oh my God, I gotta go to the work. I'm so excited for me. To me, that's the most important to be successful in your life. It, it absolutely does. And then, and, and, my, and my final question, and it's not an easy question. <laughs> um, what do you think the world needs more of? Love. 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 I think that peace and love. We need more about that. And you can yeah. never uh, get uh, too much of those. Peace and love. Peace and love. And with that, Marjana, I would like to say thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart for sharing your time with us and for sharing your story with us as well. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. And I want to, as always, thank you, my loyal listener and followers, and remind you that information about the radio show and my guests like Marjana today can be found at louisehreed.com. Also a big shout out to my producer, Cameron Steele. Thank you so much at Contact Talk Radio Network. And finally, I'm here to highlight and showcase people who are taking brave, bold action, whose actions have a positive impact in our world. With that said, I'd like to encourage you all to be brave, be bold, and be happy. And in the words of Mirjana, you create your own future. Until next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm Louise H. Reed, 
wishing you an amazing day. Goodbye, friends.